This is the Badger 2040, a Raspberry Pi powered little e-ink badge. Um, I've had this now for over a year and I realized I never did a video on it. And there's actually a few things I want to do to this. There's been a software update that I want to take a look at and we can kind of update it for the new conference year. So yeah, let's dig into it. This really is a great little badge that I use all the time really when I'm at conferences. It's currently set up to have a QR code to my links website, so feel free to scan it if you want to. Uh, and then some information about me as well, my name, my online handle, and a few other bits and pieces. And yeah, I kind of just said it and forgot it. That's the joy of e-ink. Uh, literally just programmed this up about a year ago and then just left it. But things have changed. I want to make some modifications to this. I want to get a case for it, uh, get some battery power, and uh, see what we can do with it in 2025. Uh, I think uh, there's been some OS updates and stuff that I want to look at. Let's dig in and let's uh, have a look at this little device. I think it's really cool. and I think you'll like it too. So here's the badge itself. Uh, like I say, I've had this for a little while now. It's actually getting a bit worn on the like rubber coating on the screen cable, which is one of the reasons that prompt me to kind of do this video and do some upgrades. But uh, yeah, this is the kind of thing itself. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, essentially, it's powered by this Raspberry Pi 2040 chip, which is a dual arm processor running at 133 megahertz with 264 KB of RAM. So it's nothing super amazing, but it's more than enough for this kind of purpose. It's an e-ink sc screen at 296 pixels by 128. And obviously because it's e-ink, it stays on, even then there's no power. So at the moment, there's no power plugged into this at all. And essentially it will just continue looking like this, which is great. Um, you do then have some buttons that you can control when there is power. Uh, and then obviously where you can put a lanyard and that sort of thing. A couple more buttons around the back, your power connector, a USB-C port for power slash data transfer, uh, and then there is also a breakout port here as well, so you could connect some sensors and that sort of thing to it. So yeah, pretty straightforward really, nothing super fancy, but it's really cool. Uh, I think it's such a great kind of personalizable badge. It's great because it doesn't require power to display anything. You can just set it and forget it. That's it. So first things first, we're going to print a case for this because like you say like I say it's getting a little bit battered I want to protect it a bit so let's get that printed and then let's get that on we're also going to attach a double a battery pack to the back to allow us to kind of do stuff on the go and actually power it uh, I want to do that just because I kind of want to be able to experiment with a few other things and then we're going to take a look at the latest version of the software for this because I haven't looked at it and I know there's some improvements and we can see if we can update our screen to be a bit more interesting. There we go. All right, let's get the case printed. So here is the case kind of printed up. This is the front of the case. This is the back of the case. I've already kind of seated some uh, nuts into there to screw it together. Uh, yeah, coming really well, 
really like this design. It's really minimal. It's got a nice cutout for the battery pack that we'll be using. So big props to the person that designed this. Links will be down below. Uh, yeah, let's get it all sorted. I think the most fiddly thing is going to be getting this in and getting this long cable plugged in and kind of seated away. Might have to cut this. We'll see. We'll see if I can kind of get it wrapped in there. Uh, and stuck down with some Velcro. So here's the bit of Velcro that we'll be using to attach the battery pack to the back of the case, uh, to the back of the badge, and then we have the case to kind of wrap around it. This is going to be a little bit fiddly, but I'll try and record it and see where we get to. So one thing I really do like about this case design is that the front is very, very snug. It kind of keeps itself in there just through thick friction, to be honest, and still you have access to everything. But as you can see, most importantly, it protects the display cable, which is starting to get a bit worn. Um, I really like it. I printed it in white just to kind of match the PCB. And yeah, I think this works really well. Even just this bit, to be completely honest, is giving it a lot of extra protection. But let's get the back on as well and get this battery pack in place. And there we go, all set up. I really like the case. The battery pack isn't too offensive. It's still quite streamlined. And, and because it's Velcroed in, we can take it off as well and still keep the case on to kind of keep it protected, but set in one position. All right, well, let's have a look at the software side of things. So I have my computer set up with a couple of bits of pieces that we're gonna need. Um, there is a really great like how-to tutorial of getting started with the badge over on the Pymore website? Don't know, very dyslexic, not sure how that's pronounced. But anyway, uh, this gives you a really good step-by-step -step through on how to use this and everything else that you might need. Uh, it gives you information on doing battery, uh, like, kind of the same sort of thing as what we had done, and uh, just with the printed case as well, and, and all that sort of fun stuff. So it's all here, and basically we're gonna use this Fonny software to actually make changes. So the first thing, however, that we're gonna do is we are going to update our badge to use the latest release. As you can see here, there was a release, uh, the. 0.5 release back in June last year. I know for a fact that that hasn't been used on here because I haven't touched this in over a year. So, you know, it's been longer than that. Uh, and also what's kind of cool is it adds PNG support. So we're gonna have a look at that as well, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, let's get started with this. And essentially, if we have a look at the main repo, it'll kind of give you the steps to install it. Reset your device into the bootloader mode by holding the boot button, which is this one here. It's a little bit hard to get to in the case. And then pressing the other button next to it. This has now appeared as a mounted device. And again, as you can see here, it says basically drag and drop the file that we have downloaded. And as you can see, it's rebooted into the kind of clean Badger OS, which gives you a bunch of different interesting like options that show you what this is capable of uh, and really makes use of the buttons to kind of display different information, kind of the system information there. It's a really cool kind of set of badge which is kind of a good example of essentially the same sort of thing that I already had on here now if I there we go that is now working uh, we've got a clock can display the time obviously there's no real time clock in this so at the moment it's just set to <laughs> default but you could obviously have it counting as a clock if you wanted to and was going to give it constant power uh, there's an ebook example, which I believe is just displaying some text. Yeah, so this is just kind of displaying text using these buttons to move up and down. Kind of interesting. 
Uh, not really the best screen for that, but still, nonetheless, interesting. Other options we have in here is fonts, help information, QR gen, which we saw previously. But the thing that's very interesting to me is images. Image support is a new thing in this release, as you can kind of see here. Uh, we have PNG support. This is actually a JPEG, I think. Uh, so I'm going to have some fun with that as well. Let's go have a look at the software side on the computer and how we can build our own stuff for this. If we have a look in Thony, this is where we can kind of set up our connection to our device. And we do that again. We can follow these instructions here, download it, plug the badge in, the interpreter, tools, options, interpreter, and we can set what device we're connecting to. So for our sense, it's the Raspberry Pi 2040. Um, and we can connect and we are now on the device itself. And you can see this is all the code, if you like, that is already on here um, and all the different examples and information and all that sort of stuff. So you could obviously just wipe this and install your own stuff onto it, or you can use some of these as kind of a baseline for whatever you want to run. Um, previously, I'd literally just wiped it and just taken one of the examples here probably was the badge and started to play around with it and looked at kind of all the different things that you can do so yeah essentially you've got micro python here and there's a huge range of things that you can do on uh, the device you're given a really nice range of examples and you've kind of got the launcher code and you've just given a lot of stuff to work with from the get-go there's a, a punk um, JPEG file example here, and it kind of shows that you have to have the images in that sort of setup. And I think there's probably more information here. Yeah, it kind of shows you the badge text and um, the badge image that's used. It's all kind of pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is see if what kind of programs we can find online a little bit just to have a play with. And then I'm going to refresh my badge and uh, we'll see where we get to with that. So here's one example, a little dino game that someone has kind of copied over. Um, and it is the good old dino game from Chrome. <laughs> I don't quite know what the controls are. I would have assumed up is to jump. Oh yeah, you've got to you've got to hold it down. Okay. <laughs> so the refresh isn't great. Like this is a cheap screen. It's also been beaten up a bit. I have had it for a year, so this might not be the best condition it is in. But it kind of shows you the sort of thing that you can do even on such a low-powered device. It's a fun little game. Uh, but let's get it kind of set up for what we actually want to use it for, of course, which is using it as a conference badge. Some time later. I want to show where we are at the moment. Um, basically, I've got this badge view. This is an image, which is really cool, PNG. Um, but in all honesty, I think it just takes up so much space that it makes the rest not so readable at a distance. Um, I don't know, you have to comment down below. What do you think? Do you think it's nice having the image there? Uh, my my feeling and what I'm going to do probably um, is in the future get rid of the image and make all the text bigger. The font sizes I can't really increase annoyingly because my name is too long, but I might tweak around and see if I can get this to take up more space. And then essentially you press the down button and you get the QR code to scan for my socials i'm gonna add a bit more text here but we're nearly there nearly there just wanted to give an update as we were hacking away so this is the badge in its kind of final form at least for now still not sure on the image let me know down below what you think but i managed to get a different font that really kind of fills up the space nicely my name my handle and my job title and then if we flip on the on switch on the back so it's now turned on uh nothing changes immediately but if you press the button here it's going to reload that main screen and then if you press the down button it switches over to the QR code which you can scan 
and it sort of says scan for my socials. And again, I can leave that like this if I want, turn it off and that can be left like that, or I can switch back to the main screen. So I have these two screens now programmed in, uh, which gives me, I think, a little bit more space than how I had it configured previously. I just really like it. I think this is a really great kind of setup. The code for this will be linked down below on my GitHub. So if you want to use that as a base for your own, go for it. There we go. So there we have it, the final form for my Badger 2040, at least for now. I really like the 3D printed case. I think that's really good. Um, and the battery on as well is going to be useful to be able to switch between those two screens. Just adds a little bit of extra functionality that I really like. Um, obviously, the links for the 3D printed case and the code and everything else will be down below. So go check that out. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed putting it together. And I think this is a fun little project for anyone that wants to kind of tinker around with an e-ink display. Of course, it's designed to be a badge, but it could be anything. It is fundamentally just an e-ink display with a pie attached to it. So you could do anything with this if you wanted to. All right, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again very, very soon for another video. Bye for now.